Hi, it's right now I'm gonna show you guys how to draw something that I get asked to tattoo a lot, which is a Hanya mask. Um, I've probably done about a hundred of these. And um, throughout the years, I started to really, you know, um, understand them more and more. You know, at first I just kind of drew what I thought looked cool. And uh, if I look at it now, I, I don't think it looks that great, but um, it's still something that I'm still developing, but um, definitely when you draw a Hanya, there's certain planes that are very important. So one thing I'll do is I'll try to determine like how big I'm going to do it first. And what I'll do is I'll kind of do quick sketching. I'll do like the, figure out like where the forehead is going to be. And then I give them, sometimes you can do different size noses. You can make them quite large. And then I'll, the eyes are a little bit close together. So once I figure out like where the eyes and nose it are, everything else kind of falls into place. And you can readjust like the size of the head, but I like to get a basic um, dimension. So Ahania is a, actually a, a female demon. So they're, they have like a, little bit of a jealous worried look they're not always uh, super they look angry but they're also sad they have a lot of grief so I kind of bring out the see here's the eye I bring out the forehead pretty far and then it goes back and then up so I like to kind of work out all the the planes and the angles and then the around the eye goes the cheek and I have that I'll have that come out almost the same angle as the forehead here and then it tucks in behind the nose there and it kind of develop the nostril shape here and then the the upper lip also, I keep it on these same, this same angle. Then I figure out what, you know, this thing right here is uh, the philtrum. That's what I learned that it's called. But then I'll figure out where the upper lip is. And then it's good to, you know, you don't always have to have everything line up. Like sometimes you want things to be not aligned, but I'm going to show you this one with the alignment also honey like their nose they have kind of a the cheek has a space between the nostril and the cheek usually there you won't see it on this side because this nostril will cover it and then it comes up you guys falling with me here. And then I'm going to do this side of the eye. You know, you can make the eyes like big or small. These are a little bit large. And then there's like a little lid around the side there then the forehead kind of comes down i'm drawing this a little bit bigger than this would this is probably more like where the hairline will be then with the jaw so here's like the bottom of the cheek. I bring the jaw out a little bit and then it comes back forward. And like the bottom jaw is normally kind of uh, has like an underbite. So I usually will do the, the fang tooth between the nostril and the cheek and then I'll just do the front teeth here. And then 
the molars. Then one last tooth in the back. And the bottom jaw comes down. I'll kind of have a little bit curve up. I'll like go around, curve up, and then the lip will come up like this. Like I said, it has like an underbite, so this teeth, these teeth will come out a little bit further. She's pretty ugly. So you don't have to worry about making her beautiful. And I'll pop the tongue in there. The other side of the tongue. And figure out where the chin is going to be. You can either make, you know, sometimes people make the chin kind of big. Some people make it kind of small. Um, I go back and forth sometimes. I guess it depends on the client or how well it's going to fit. And I'll follow this line with after I get the jaw on there. And here's the ear. Usually draw, get the earlobe on there, whatever ear shape you decide to go with. Now get the top of the head in there. All right, so I'll figure out this is like where the the middle is. I'll try to put the horn somewhere in the middle between the ear and the top of the head. And the other one would come out from behind. Yeah, this one is a little bit closer to the middle. I always try to make them look a little intense, you know. Don't want it to be too boring. And uh, I guess I'll make this one a mask, so I'll put tassels on there. I will usually have them, you know, they come out of the ear, they come around the uh, outside of the ear here. And then you just kind of do some loops. You can make these uh, kind of wild if you want, but I usually just make them kind of regular. Some I've seen people do them where they're very um, angular, which can look cool, but I'm just gonna do them round. And the tassel part, a lot of people get pretty fancy with these, but I like to keep it regular. I don't know why. So I'll figure out like the shape, which motion the uh, tassel's going. And then I kind of have it round out. But I want to follow this curve. Then I kind of just do the the bumps. It wraps around. You know, you can see it kind of this wraps around. Then I'll do the other side.
There's like a little knot. And you know, say this is an arm, you know, you can like work out like different clouds or, you know, a lot of people do like maple leaves. There's a lot of different things you can do. I wouldn't really suggest doing them with any other flower than like chrysanthemums or maple leaves because that's kind of like, uh, you know, they're symbols of uh, death or fall. So they are more suitable for a Hanya. I'll just kind of get the hair in there a little more. I just do a couple rows of lines here. I'm not going to do this one like as fancy or as simple as I can. I'm just going to do it kind of like somewhere in the middle. You know, you can make the, the rope. You could either keep it solid or you can make it like rope where it has like the twisted part. And you can alternate colors. There's all sorts of uh, things you can do to make it a little fancier, or you can make it all the same color. Or no color if you're doing it black and gray. I think in tattooing, it's good to try to put as many like repetitive patterns as you can into your design and like kind of like uh, the same shapes, you know, and movements because it just makes something uh, more pleasing to the eye. It gets a little bit of a rhythm. That's why I think that I'm so drawn to uh, traditional and Japanese tattoos is because it has a lot of these uh, rhythms in it. It's also it's almost kind of like hypnotizing and it has like a decoration to it. You know, I always like to think of uh, like a good friend of mine. He's really good at explaining tattoos and he used to be a uh, graduate student art teacher. So he's like, you really, you have to wear a tattoo. And when you think about tattooing as something that you're wearing, you just kind of like imagine it is something that has to be decorative. I mean, not that there's, you know, you can tattoo anything and if you do a really good job, it's going to look cool. So, but for me, my personal favorite is something that has a little bit of a decorative quality. Then I'll kind of put in a little bit of shading just so, to see, see the shapes that I made. You know, at this stage, you could also, if something looks off, it's easy to make the adjustment, you know, before you start doing any inking. And that's why I like to draw with a, a pencil because you can always um, modify anything that looks off. Like, I think I drew the jaw a little too thin. I like pushed it back. I moved the ear back a little bit. You know, no matter how many times you draw something, you're not going to, you're not necessarily going to draw it perfect without erasing every time. So I think it's important to, uh, analyze your drawing, see what kind of looks off and then fix it because whether you're just drawing it for fun or you're going to tattoo somebody, the more precise you get it in the, in the beginning, the better it's going to look at the end. You know, so make all your mistakes when you're sketching, not when you're doing the finished product. You know, there's nothing worse than, you know, starting a big project and then something about the design bothers you after you already have finished the outline and then 
you're pretty much stuck with it. And if you're tattooing somebody, they're, they're the ones that are going to be stuck with it. Your mistake. So you really, really want to try to like really see what's wrong with stuff. One good trick to do is to, um, you know, look at stuff in the mirror and then you can kind of see, you look at it from a different perspective and you can kind of notice what's off. Yeah, I think that's like one of the hardest things to do is see what's wrong with what you're doing, but not in like a way that you're bashing yourself, but in a way that's going to help you improve. You know, you got to keep it fun or you're not going to want to keep doing it. So once I get the shading in there, I'm going to kind of check it out see if there's anything I'm, I want to modify. Oh, I forgot. Do some like little stringy hairs coming down to make her a little extra creepy. Usually just do the hair solid black right here. I'm gonna ink just the middle part. You know, at the end of the line, I like to press kind of hard. I get like a pressure sensitive pen. It's almost like a, you know, kind of like a brush pen. Just makes it more expressive. That's what I try to do. Sometimes when I tattoo, I actually do that too. Like I kind of try to uh, control a line so that it can be a little bit lighter in some areas and then you can go darker in others. It's just all about pressure. And I know like on Ink Master, I might lose because my line work isn't looking like it's made by a computer, but I prefer it to be a little more lively than perfect. You know, it's better to have uh, personality than precision, if you ask me. I would definitely lose Ink Master. My eyesight's starting to go. My shading is getting choppier. <laughs> no, that's actually one thing it's not. The longer you tattoo, the more you realize that, you know, Every little millimeter of every tattoo isn't that important. It's more of the overall picture. Because when you look at a tattoo that's like uh, 20, 30 years old, something that's been lived in for a while, you know, those like really little 
minute things really don't matter. Sometimes she will give him a little pointy head. <laughs> So one thing I noticed that a lot of people do when they draw Hanya is they make everything kind of flat. Like this whole, like the whole face will come down this way. And I like to really make sure that you have like these different like planes that come in and out and like almost think of it as like a three dimensional object instead of just something that's very flat. Even though, you know, you might, colored in very flat you still want the outline to suggest volume Sometimes people would do uh, different eyebrows, but you know, this one, I'm not gonna give her eyebrows. She got pissed off and shaved them off. All right, I'm not gonna ink in the the um, tassels, but you get the idea. Can you pull it back towards you just slightly for the overhead? Perfect. There you have it, Hanya.